Welcome back everyone, Mudford here. Finally got a chance to work on this 7.3. This is my 2002 Ford F-350 with the 7.3 diesel in it. I'll show you a little clip I got of me starting it up and how bad it's smoking. Okay, so that's a problem if you're in town or around other people in parking lots and you fire it up, they get a little upset with you. After a couple minutes, it, it gets warmed up and it seems to do all right, but runs a little rough and it's really smoky. So we're going to try to get to the bottom of that right now. So the first thing we're going to look at is the glow plug system. And the first thing we're going to look at with that is the relay. So it's back here, right near your uh, fuel filter. There's another solenoid here. Anyway, this is the solenoid here, the second one back here. There's a taller one in front of it. This is the one for the glow plugs. What I'm actually going to do is first we're going to make sure we got power to it, which this one should always be on. So we're going to check it with a test light. And the test light comes on. The other side, it's not on. So how it works is the module is going to trip the solenoid and then the power will go straight through from this terminal to this terminal. So what we're going to do is put our light on this one. Then we're going to have somebody turn the key to on and we'll see if the bulb lights up and if we hear it click. Just hearing it click might not be enough because sometimes they will click and they're not really working inside. It's not making a good contact. So we are going to make sure we have power on the out. And if we do, that rules out this and the uh, module. So if that's the case, then we'll move on and we will check the individual glow plugs. But right now we're just going to check this. And I suspect this is going to work because it is starting all right. So what I'll probably do is leave this hooked up. Since I don't have any help right now, I'll leave this hooked up here, wedged in here. And then I will go ahead and trip the key and we'll see what happens. The light kicked on just fine. So that means our relay is working. Our module is working also to tell them to turn on. So now we're just going to have to go through and check. Um, we're going to check at the connector each glow plug and see if we have maybe a couple of bad ones. If the relay itself wasn't working, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I probably would have had some no starts with it. But it started for me every time. It just run ran a little rough and really smoky. So I'm assuming we just maybe have a couple of uh, glow plugs not working. So we're going to check and see if we can figure out which ones. The next thing we're going to want to do is get into the wiring harness where it goes through the valve cover. They're on the inside towards the intake side. So what we're going to do, just so I can show you better, and it'll make it a lot easier, is we're going to take the um, pipes off going to the intercooler, and then the one from the intercooler. And we're, we're going to um, be able to see down in there a lot better. And then also for the next step, we're going to pull the valve covers off after this. So we need to get that stuff out of the way anyway. So right now I'm just going to pull intercooler pipes off and the air intake also to the turbo. I'm going to go ahead and get it loose and get it loose down, down there where it goes up to the intercooler and then just pop it right off. There's the connector right down there. It's right underneath of where that um, pipe runs. So we're going to pull that out and we're going to measure the resistance on the glow plugs. And that will give us an idea if the glow plugs are any good. They are the ones on the outside. They are the two front wires and the two back wires. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect it and we're going to get a look at our resistance. And that should tell us if we have a bad glow plug in there. the connector loose. And it's kind of tricky because when you see the connector in there, you think that this part is going to stay down and not come out with it. 
So where you have to pry it loose at is on the sides here. There and there. You can see there's little bumps that hold it in there. You're going to want to get that out of the way. And then you can see the pins down there. So you're going to want to touch one end of your meter on one of the back two pins and then have your meter on the other end of your meter on the ground and see what you get. Let's put it to 200 ohms and I'll touch it to something here on the AC. You can see I got a couple ohms. We're going to guess, I think it's 1 to 10, something like that. We'll just see if they're fairly even now. Okay, I'm on the first one. It looks like I got 1.6. That's the back one. Move to the next one. Interesting. Guessing this could be a bad one here. Check the front too. That is the second one back from the front. And now I got it on the front one. So it looks like the looks like we have one bad one here on this side. We're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, I pulled the tube off going over here to my air filter. And you can get down in there and see the same thing on this one. You can see the pins just barely there. And I just did the same thing and checked them. And these ones all checked good. But we're going to do one more check. It looks like we only have one bad glow plug. We're going to have a look at the injectors now. I've seen and heard where you can just test it. Um, here, like I'm going to show you. I'm going to take the valve covers off. We're going to fire it up and see what happens. Just connecting this um, wire connector here on the driver's side. Then we're going to get the bracket out. Is it just about? Okay, now we can. Now we're going to get it out of the bracket, and then get the bracket out of the way. Then we should be able to get the valve cover right out. It looks like they're 13 millimeter bolts all the way around. We're going to pull the valve cover out. We got the valve covers off and out of the way now. These were 13 millimeter bolts. The only one that was tricky that I thought was the driver's side one, the rear one. It was kind of tucked right up against the firewall. And I tried a few different ways. And the best thing I found to get it out was I used a quarter inch ratchet with just a short socket. And I had just enough room to get it. it would, I'd go back to, and hit the firewall and then I would have a little bit of room to work it and got it out. I tried like a ratcheting wrench and a 3 8 drive and it was, I couldn't get it to start. But quarter inch would probably be the best for that. And then the one that's under here, you're going to have to use a ratcheting wrench just because of the breather right here. And on the passenger side, you had two of them um, that were studs here, right in the middle. And there are plastic uh, holders here for the heater hoses to hold them up out of the way. The best thing to do is pop the heater hose out and then get a pry bar or something under there, a screwdriver, and slide these off the studs. They're kind of threaded, but you can pop them off. That's the way it works. So I broke one of mine because I pulled on it instead of prying. So just be careful. Give them a good pry. And then the front one here is where your oil dipstick is hooked on, so you're going to have to take that nut off. And then there's some wires that are hooked onto the dipstick tube just to hold them out of the way. You're going to have to disconnect those and then um, move your dipstick out of the way. And then you can take this one out. And what I did was I left this bolt in loose and that bolt in loose, and that way it kind of holds it in um, the valve cover. That way it kind of holds the valve cover in place while you're getting the back ones out. Natural tendency is to go for the easy ones first and then you don't want to be back here struggling with the back one and have the valve cover moving all over the place on you. So, another thing, before you take it loose, I would pull the oil fill extension off because you're not going to be able to get it out with that in. You're going to hit too much stuff. I waited, thought I could 
sneak it out and it didn't work and then I had the valve cover all up on an angle trying to get that loose. It would have been much easier to take loose while it was in place. Now that I got both the valve covers out of the way we can check our glow plug and it was this one here, the second one from the back on the passenger side and we can check it um, again we can disconnect it here and uh, check the resistance right on it and that'll um, rule out a bad wire. Sometimes these wires get pinched here under the valve cover or the connector isn't good and we can rule that out and know that we have a bad glow plug. And if it's not a bad glow plug, chances are we'll, we will replace the gasket here. It's a reusable valve cover gasket, but the wiring is built right in the gasket, so we would have to replace that if the wiring were bad. Needle nose pliers down in here, maybe, and I'm probably going to have to set the camera down. What I'm going to try to do is, you can see the white wire there, that goes down to the glow plug and there's a big boot over it. I'm just going to very carefully try to grab that boot and slide it off. Oh, I was able to get the boot off very easily with the uh, needle nose and get it up out of the way. You can see the connector inside of there. The next thing we're going to do is get the, one of the probes for the multimeter down there and try to check the resistance to ground on the glow plug itself. It's real hard to see down in there. I'll zoom it in if I can. That's the end that I have the probe on right there, the end of the glow plug. So it appears we have a bad glow plug. show you that they all are pushing oil out the way they should be. So I'm guessing that I don't have a bad injector. I'm going to go ahead with the glow plug and replace that. So we got the glow plug to replace. Got a Motorcraft one. Got it from Rock Auto for $9.39. Not too bad of a price and I usually try to go with OEM for stuff like this if I can. So I have a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive deep well socket and I can slip it right down over the glow plug and there's enough room for it to fit and there's enough room for it to fit in there with the uh, rocker arm I think we can get it started with this plan is that yeah it came right loose hopefully the glow plug comes out without uh, a problem I think we can get it quite a ways out this is my first glow plug change. What I was told to do is here's the glow plug, take like a vacuum hose, slip it over the end, and then use it to get it the rest of the way out. Because there are clearance issues getting a socket in there. As you get the glow plug almost out, your socket will hit the rocker arm. So with this, it'll grip it enough, we can turn it, and hopefully the whole complete glow plug comes out, otherwise we have a lot of work to do. I just put the vacuum line on the end of the new one, and I'm using that to get it started. Looks like it's going in just fine. Then I can finish tightening it up with the uh, socket once I get this a ways further. But it seems to be going just fine. Okay, it looks like I have the 
wire fully seated on the new glow plug, so I think we're ready to slip the valve cover back on. The upper gasket is reusable. Just going to wipe it down as best as I can with a paper towel before I put the valve cover on. And I'm also going to clean off the underside of the valve cover also. Again, the trick with the valve cover to get it in is to angle it with the front up here, get it over the injectors and the rocker arms, and then move it over into place. And in order to do that, you have to have the filler neck out. Don't forget. So now we're just going to go ahead and finish throwing this back together, and I'll start it up for you, and hopefully we got a lot less smoke. You can see a little bit of our next project. That's the turbo. We're going to put a new pedestal in, new up pipes. Um, we're also going to replace the wheel. We're going to delete the... Um, forget what the thing's called. I'll, I'll put it in the description. We're going to delete that. All right, we got everything back together. Go ahead and start it up now. Go ahead and keep an eye and see how much it smokes compared to before. Keep in mind it is a fairly high mileage engine, so you are going to see a little bit on the start, but hopefully it's not overwhelming. there was a little bit of smoke it was a little hazy but definitely a lot better than before so we're going to call this a success